are you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. I'm gonna be making over some YouTuber products, including these prime cans, and I'm also going to be making over the Mr. Beast Burger logo. So you might be wondering, Chloe, what are your qualifications to be doing this in the first place? I am, in fact, a self-taught artist. And no, I'm not a graphic designer. I've also drawn on an iPad. My boyfriend's PlayStation 5. I drew on someone's Tesla once, which I was allowed to. Okay, just, just putting that out there. I was allowed to. And basically those are my qualifications and the deciding factor that I use to customize other brands' products. Do I think these products need makeover? First and foremost, I, I mean, these look great. I, I'm not saying that I'm gonna improve these because I'm most likely not. But I would not be an artist if I didn't think that I could sort of like use any blank surface on pretty much any object in order to make it more artsy. I will say, when I first saw the Mr. Beast logo, I thought to myself it looked really clever but also it looks a little bit like it was done in Microsoft Paint. And I thought, oh, maybe it was just someone's mock-up. But there are in fact stickers with that logo on it. And I mean, I think it looks great. Don't get me wrong, I really do. It's just the jagged edges were bugging me a little bit and the uneven dots on top. However, when you go to the Mr. Beast Burger website now, the logo is very different. It's more smoothed out. So I'm not sure if that was like the first logo they did that they then improved on or they just rebranded. I don't know. What I know is I'm going to go from the original logo that I found and I'm going to be giving that one a makeover as well. Starting out, I'm going to be using my Posca markers. There is some real estate that we have all the way around the logo. However, before I start, I think I might pull these into Procreate and kind of design them on there just to sketch it out, see what looks best. Kind of looks a bit like Barney at the moment. Just wondering if we can do maybe the shape of strawberries, kind of like this, but not like that because that looks terrible. Maybe something like this. And because this is outlined in the way that it is, we could always outline them in the end with a thick black outline to cut, oh, not, maybe not that thick. Mmm, I kind of like that. I might do that. Something with those outlines, we'll see. Okay, so this should be interesting. Is this red gonna look good with that? We'll see. Then we have a cool green. Let's start with a bunch of strawberries. This is gonna be very much so a trust the process kind of thing for a while. I'm gonna be honest, it's very hard to see with the red and the pink, but it's gonna pop when we put the outlines on here. Gonna add in some green, I think. Just gonna attempt to outline these just to see how it looks. We now interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you a sponsored portion of the video. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Foreo. And it is thanks to sponsors like these that I'm able to keep making this content free for my audience. So if you can stick around, let me introduce you to something really cool. If you two are almost 30, have constantly dry skin and spend more time covering your hands in paint than your face in moisturizer. The UFO 2 by Foreo is designed with a combination of cutting edge technologies. This revolutionary device leaves you with an instantly nourished, healthy glow from the very first use. Get your dream skin in only two minutes with the UFO supercharged two minute facial. This thing is everywhere. Stores like Sephora, H&M, Neiman Marcus, Macy's, and many more. And in the last three years, Foreo products have won more than 120 design and beauty awards. I absolutely love this little device. UFO 2 is amazing. I'm obsessed with this thing. Honestly, it helps to rejuvenate your skin by locking in moisture and reducing your crater sized pores. It also has advanced temperature control so you can make it hot or cool. It allows for better absorption. So if your skin is as dry as the Sahara desert, it'll instantly infuse serum into the deepest layers of skin for superior results. It also utilizes full spectrum LED light therapy to diminish the signs of aging and visibly revitalize skin. And the signature T-Sonic massage helps to relax facial and neck muscle tension points you get while making art. So not only does this boost your skin's radiance for softer, smoother, selfie-ready skin, you can experience the world's first professional spa that fits in the palm of your hand. It also connects to the Foreo app, which features unique treatment for UFO-powered activated masks and Foreo sheet masks. I absolutely absolutely love this thing. My skin is always so dry and since using this for the last few weeks it's been so much more nourished and glowing. So if you'd like to try it for yourself you can get up to 21% discount available on the link in the description below. And thank you so much to Foreo for sponsoring today's video and back to regularly scheduled programming. I'm gonna be honest with you this is very difficult to do on a 3D surface but I can't really complain because I chose to do this myself. 
Okay, so it's very basic at the moment, but this is the general idea. In an ideal world, I would have the very, very small Posca, but I don't, I just have this one. So we're gonna do our best to figure out if we're able to even use this. Just adding seeds to the watermelon and the strawberries. Kinda looks nice, actually. I think this corner needs something though, it's kinda missing. Ooh, I'm really liking how this is looking. I mean, if this was done digitally, it would be a lot neater, obviously, than being hand-drawn. And that's why graphic design is done on a computer, because you can make it symmetrical and look it really nice and neat. But for hand-drawn, I'm actually pretty happy with this so far. A little big strawberry over here. I'm going to attempt to outline it in black now, as neat as I can, which is very difficult on a cylindrical surface. This is hard. <laughs> okay, it's not as neat as I would like it because obviously I'm drawing on the can physically and I'm using paint pens. But I'm actually pretty happy overall with the concept and how it turned out. Can add some highlights to the strawberries. I might be overdoing it now, but eh, it's fine. Okay, so I think I'm done. My hand is really cramped right now from holding the can. And again, this would be a lot neater if I was doing it digitally, but I figured it would be a little bit more fun to actually do it physically with pens. But this was kind of the vibe I was going for, just to kind of add in all of those little elements to make it a real strawberry watermelon flavor. Again, is this improving it? No, it's really not. Like, it's not necessary, any of what I've done on this can, but it was a lot of fun to do, just to make it a little bit more pop, you know? I mean, the colors themselves pretty much sell it. But it's always fun to add a little bit of, you know, artsy. Maybe they could make a limited edition flavor and then do something like this to really make it stand out. Again, if I was to do this properly, I would do it digitally because that way, obviously, you're gonna have no brush strokes. It's gonna be a lot smoother, a lot neater. And on to the next flavor. I think I'm gonna do the lemon lime. I think I might leave orange mango for another video, but I'm gonna stick with the lemon lime for now. So we need yellow, and we're going to need green. Hopefully that kind of clashes, yeah. Eh, we'll risk it for a biscuit. Okay, this one's gonna be quite fun because they're all gonna look the same, pretty much, the lemon lime shapes. So, let's get started. This yellow pen has seen better days, I think. Something tells me this is gonna need a few layers though. It's not going on as well. Okay, this one's going on way better than the yellow one did for some reason. I think my Posca markers have seen better days. These are not as juicy as they once were. Oops. I'm not sure why, but I'm having a really hard time with my yellow pen. They're just not wanting to work on me today. Okay, let's try and add a bit more detail to this. I'm gonna add some darker dots to these lines. Looks like a taco. So here's the pink and green side by side. Let me know which one you prefer and whether you think I just completely ruined it or if you would still buy Prime if it looked like this. Okay, let's get started on Mr. Beast's logo. Now we've all got past the point where I've told you I am not a graphic designer, okay? So if you are a graphic designer, don't worry. I know you're gonna be screaming at me. This looks fine as it is. Why are you touching it? It's a mass 
It's a masterpiece. I'm doing this for pure fun, okay? I don't know what I'm doing. No need to state the obvious in the comments. Okay, so we're gonna start off. I'm gonna smooth this out. Usually with things like Illustrator or Procreate, you can kind of make a line. And even if it's wobbly, if you hold it down, it sort of smooths it out. Okay, so throughout this process, there was a lot of trial and error. I mean, like any artwork, I suppose, there's trial and error. It kind of goes without saying, but I was so back and forth on this. Like, should I have cheese? No cheese. Should I have tomato, tomato, potato? potato, lettuce, green or blue lettuce, green eggs and ham. I was like that annoying drive through customer who can't make up their mind and holds up the entire line. I finally settled on some blue lettuce because that looks appetizing, doesn't it? It was the color they used in their original logo and I just felt it really worked for his branding and just looked more Mr. Beast. My main goal with this was to keep his color of branding. So he has blue, blue, he has pink and I wanted to kind of keep that in theme. I also decided to add some sesame seeds, but not just dots, actual sesame seed shaped sesame seeds. And I will say I am like 99% sure that none of these burgers have sesame seeds on them when I look online. But I mean, I've never been able to order one. So what do I know? I saw a lot of his burgers had cheese. So we added some little triangular slices and really like how that looks. I did use about 30 layers on this just to make sure each part could be moved around as needed. So I could move the letters above, below, the cheese in, the cheese out. I decided to add extra cheese because there's no lactose intolerance over here apparently. After a while I realized this looks kind of retro. It wasn't deliberate, but I was still trying to keep in the same color scheme whilst also using the actual word part of the original logo because I just think it's perfect and that can't be improved upon. I was literally just redrawing the burger part. I also decided to outline each section with darker shades of the colors that shape was already in. And in the end, this is what I came up with. Let me know, do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you prefer the original? Do you think it's fine as it is? Do you like mine? Let me know. And if you want me to try doing this with the Mr. Beast chocolate packaging or a different YouTuber's product just for fun, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and be sure to like this video as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see me try this again. There's a ton of YouTuber brands out there. Any you'd like to see me paint on or make over in a future video, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next video.